Hello and welcome to Election Brief with me, Arba Kumsen. Coming up in today's edition, Member of Parliament for Asawase and Minority Chief Whip takes on security agencies for standing by and concerned after NPP sympathizers allegedly pulled a gun at a registration centre at Abuabo Number no. 1. Sometimes they even why they arrested the person. You see all this deliberateness. Some of the police officers and the military guys and the easy officials are in bed with the government and they are doing all this. Also, National Peace Council says it is not getting the desired cooperation from political parties in the attainment of electoral peace. The person out of the queue. The political parties have decided to disregard this mechanism. These are all things that we expect the political parties to know and adhere to. And access to potable water, key among issues for residents of Damongo ahead of the joy ballot box in that constituency. In fact, the water problem in Damango here is very serious. In fact, this is the kind of uh, this is the kind I'm going to use to bath. Instead of using a bucket or because there's not enough water, this is the kind I'll use. We are live from our studios here at Kokumimle on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 144. Stay with us. Who do you take orders from? Who do you take orders from? This is a policeman who see me. So I want to send this picture to the whole world. If somebody die here, they will not hold anybody responsible. I'm telling you, one life. Police, police. Who the police? police So, what you just saw there uh, were disturbances that uh, characterized the registration exercise at Abuabo Number no. One. It's a suburb of Asawasi in the Ashanti region. This happened on Monday. It's not clear what sparked the violence, but reports suggest an MPP agent, Yoshua Yakubu pulled a pistol on MP4 Asawasi Muntaka Mubarak's bodyguard, threatening to shoot if the security personnel doesn't vacate the center. Alaji Muntaka tells Joy News he and his team have recorded many of such violent acts in the ongoing registration exercise in the constituency. According to him, although they have reported the matter to the police, it has not received the needed attention. He spoke to my colleague, Erastus Asari Donko, who is now joining me via Zoom with details of that conversation. Iras is that what more has the NP been saying? Well, so he says he, they've been cataloging many of these violent acts perpetrated uh, by uh, Yeshua Yakubu, also known as Boyo, and uh, some of the NPP uh, agents within the constituency. Uh, many of them they've reported to the police, but then uh, the police have not prosecuted even a single of them. So they have resorted to uh, compiling a data of them taking videos of all the acts within the registration centers. And at the appropriate uh, time, uh, they will issue a statement on it or try to seek justice with all those evidence. But uh, let's come back to this particular matter, the incident that happened on Monday. Uh, what sparked the violence? Well, so... Uh, we have been told by residents when we went to the registration center uh, this afternoon uh, that um, this is something that occurs on a daily basis. The NPP, in a way, by registered in perceived strong PR registrants. They want all of them to register. So a party representatives coming regularly to some of these uh, perceived strongholds and then uh, creating confusion in there and preventing people from uh, registering. And so the, that day, the MP came with his bodyguard and they sat there for some time. And the MP decided to go back to the office and left his bodyguard at the center. 
Now, these uh, people you see in the video came back to the center and asked the bodyguard to leave the premises. But he said, no, he's not leaving the premises unless his boss has returned from where he's going. And that created the scene you're watching. Uh, Yeshua Yakubu uh, pulled a gun. He claims he's a national security personnel. He pulled a gun and threatened to shoot if the bodyguard does not leave uh, the premises, then the a military man is at. But uh, NDC General Secretary Johnson Asidu Nketiah has cautioned the security services uh, against engaging in any partisan activity and he's urging them to be professional at all times during the registration process. Now, the National Peace Council says it is not getting the desired cooperation from the political parties in the attainment of electoral peace. It says it cannot force peace on the parties if they continue to disregard agreed arrangements to handle challenges during the electoral processes. At a two-day uh, training workshop on Vigilantism and Related Offenses Act 2019 in Sunyane, the Bono Regional Executive Secretary of the Peace Council, Swala Abdullah Kwanda, said as a non-prosecutorial body, the best they can do is to just engage political parties and other stakeholders in their advocacy drive to hold on to the peace the country has been enjoying. Peace building or peace work is a collective responsibility. You cannot force peace on people. So if people decide not to cooperate with you, it is very difficult for you to be able to facilitate the peace that you do. If you look at the underlying factors of all this violence in this election registration period, people bursting people from different constituency to a constituency that they do not belong to. And they know it's against the law. But which people are doing it? It's the political parties. They are behind it. So are they cooperating? There is an arrangement or mechanism that if somebody is going to register and you do not agree, you suspect the person is not qualified to register. There is a process that you go through. You don't force the person out of the queue. The political parties have decided to disregard this mechanism. These are all things that we expect the political parties to know and adhere to. So if they don't do that, the best we can do is to continue talking, continue discussing with them, continue appealing to their conscience, continue appealing to their emotions, for them to appreciate the fact that what they are doing is not in the interest of peace. The political parties, yes, we are not saying that they are giving us problems, but they are not cooperating as we want them to cooperate. Now uh, let's head to the Ashanti region where the National Peace Council is spearheading discussions for a roadmap on strengthening advocacy on the Vigilantism and Related Offenses Act. The two-day event is expected to come out with a strong advocacy to implement the Code of Conduct for the Eradication of Political Vigilantism in Ghana. Prince Apia has been monitoring the discussion. He joins us uh, with more via uh, Zoom. Hello, Prince. So what issues have come up? Uh, so uh, uh, a number of issues have come up. Uh, Issues regarding what is happening in what what happened on Monday at the water point has also come up um, a number of them, but mainly um, what we are trying to do now is to find a, a lasting way of uh, educating the public, especially the youth, on the need to um, understand that the vigilantism actually is not a good thing, and the need for people to understand peace. Uh, when it comes to uh, elections and related um, activities. So as I speak to you now, uh, a number of the stakeholders are currently uh, putting together their thoughts and to come out with the community. And some of the things that have come out is the use of social media, for instance, to strongly educate people, creating a lot of hashtags, for instance, to um, educate people um, to understand um, the uh, repercussions of engaging in these vigilantism and related activities. Uh, again, um, they are also saying that it will be possible, if it will be possible, they are going to ban, um, they are going to ensure that um, these political parties do not come to uh, registration centers or electoral areas 
with their motorbikes, especially when the, uh, elections come and campaigns begin and all those things begin to happen. And um, seriously, motorbikes uh, should will not be allowed in places like that. And they believe that um, some of these things would also help um, address this issue of vigilantism. They also encourage it that all the political parties will be committed to um, not use well-built uh, men that we popularly call uh, macho men in, uh, in most of the uh, electoral activities that are expected to uh, become very, very vibrant very soon. Uh, so some of these things are, are coming up, and we are, we are expecting that um, within a matter of um, a minute, or a, a minute, yes, and they'll be done with the community, and everything that is in there will definitely bring it to the thought. Well, Prince, uh, one of the issues you say uh, came up was that of the Asawasi issue, the violence that characterized the registration uh, exercise. What did participants have to say about that issue in particular? Yeah, um, so that, um, together with other issues, other uh, incidents that happened at the Dumasi uh, and uh, other areas, uh, what exactly they are saying is that um, that is what was about the plan on a possible ban on a motorbike in uh, registration centers and all that. Um, they need to increase security um, in these registration centers so uh, these things don't happen again. They are still in discussion, in discussion with, with, uh, to come up with the lasting uh, solution, as I said, in the uh, community. So uh, whatever comes out, we definitely put it out there. Thank you very much. Uh, Prince Apia is my colleague in the Ashanti region. All right, now a running mate to the NDC flag bearer, Professor Jane Nana Opokwajiman, has visited her hometown, Commenda, to introduce herself to the chiefs and people in the community after she was outdoored as a running mate to John Mahama on Monday. The visit is also to seek their support and blessings as she begins her new role. Scores of residents throng the streets to welcome her back home. Richard Kujunyako has more. <laughs> Before addressing the crowd at the Lorry Park at Komenda, Professor Nana Jane Opukwajiman first visited the Omahine of the Komenda traditional area, Nana Kujukru II, to ask for his blessings. <laughs> She explained her visit was just to introduce herself to her father, Nana Kojo Kru, the chief of commander, after she was introduced to the whole nation on Monday by the NDC flag bearer, John Mahama. In normal circumstances, I was supposed to visit my father to seek his thoughts when the invitation was extended to me. However, the urgent nature of the invitation made it impossible. All the same, I reached out to my father on phone for his blessings. Now I'm here to inform my father that what I told him about on phone has indeed happened and to seek his fatherly blessings. This is why I'm here. My father, here I am. Your daughter is now running mate to the NDC flag bearer, John Mahama. Paramount Chief of the Commander Traditional Area, Nana Kojokru II, told Professor Nana Jenopokwajman that he discovered something unique in her from the time she became the Vice Chancellor of the University of Cape Coast. According to the Chief, when he heard rumors of the likelihood of Professor Opokwajman to be chosen as a running mate, he assured himself that the seat is coming to Commander because they knew what they were doing in support of that. Professor Nana Jane Opokwajman addressed her town folks after her meeting with the chief of commander. She told the crowd tradition demanded she return home to seek their support and blessings after the responsibility was bestowed on her. Richard Kwejenya Akon, Joy News, Cape Coast. <laughs> And speaking of the NEC running mate, her son, Kwabna Opokwajiman, says in spite of the attacks and name-calling, his mother 
uh, will succeed in her new role. He says even though falsehood and invectives have become synonymous with Ghanaian politics, Professor Opokwajiman will stay focused and deliver on her mandate. I'm proud of her. Um, it's something that I knew would be um, like I know it's something that she would put herself very well. So I'm proud of her, and I'm also impressed by the decision of the party to give it to her. What was the initial reaction when you heard that she was the one going to be the running mate? I mean, um, it wasn't as much surprise as pride, just because I know what she's capable of doing, and I know where she can take the country and give it a chance. So for me, I was just proud. I see. Yes. But some say that your mom is getting into an arena where it's a bit difficult for women. And you know how politics is being done. I mean, at your age, I'm sure yes. you understand the kind of partisan politics we yes. engage in. Yes. Is there something that the mother you know can survive with you? I mean, I think so. Because she has been in partisan politics before as the Minister for Education. She wasn't in the front line. Now she is in the front line. Well, I mean, either way, even as Minister, you still receive some attacks, some which are baseless, but in the end, it's part of our political discourse. It's one of the reasons why we have such a high index in the freedom of speech so I mean it's unfortunate but it's part of the um, discourse and even if we don't accept it we know it is it is there so we have to acknowledge it would you encourage her to go that line should perhaps people throw tantrums and then seek to denigrate his heart when and say, reputation when you say go that line what do you mean I mean I mean hit back at those oh. who seem to hit her back I mean I think Ghanaians are tired of that back and forth yeah. so they are more interested in issues so I mean, you come and you label her, you insult her, and so on. I don't think she would gain much in responding in the same manner. So, for me, and but I think she knows what she has to do. She has a lot of experience in communication and in her field. So, I think she'll be fine. And, and, and finally, even after her appointment, mm -hmm. well, we've had quite a number of uh, unpalatable words uh, on her. Yes. Um, how did the family receive it? How did you feel about it? Oh, Were you worried? Were you disappointed? I think beyond that, the question is the media should also know how to facilitate those kinds of things so do you just listen and put it out there or do you also respond to people who are saying these things i think that's more important so over to you you're still here on election headquarters with me arba kumsa now the lack of potable water is top among a number of issues residents of damango in the savannah region are expected to put before their duty bearers as they look forward to the joy ballot box program also, persons with disability have key concerns they hope to put before the political actors seeking their votes in the December 7 polls. MFA Atiamwa Eli has more in the following report. Students of the Damangu Senior High School are the most affected in the water problem at Damangu. They spend most part of their school hours combing town to draw water from reservoirs and wells. My name is Suleiman Abbas and in fact the water problem in Damangu here is very serious. It's very serious. When it gets to Hamatan like this, we normally suffer. Normally suffer power. In fact, this is the kind of uh, this is the kind I'm going to use to bath. Instead of using a bucket or because there's not enough water, this is the kind I'll use this evening and I'll use this one to tomorrow. Then the one I'll drink here, unless I use my own money to buy. Ghana school students are there learning whilst we are searching for water and we are all going to write the same exams. That's how you always be feeling. They say they will go to senior high schools are failing their exams. It's just because of all this. In order to get water to bath, it's very, very dis uh, difficult. Unless you move from uh, long distance before you get water to bath and go to class. It's always difficult for us to get water in our school. When it's time for us to also go to school and learn, we don't get chance to go and learn. We always find it difficult to go and learn because of water. For some residents, water tank operators are their means to access water, be it drinkable or not. I followed up with two of such truck operators to the source of water. It was the Agri Dam. My checks reveal it is also the same place where grazing cattle drink from. Even the operators of these trucks are not excited about drawing water from this dam for residents. This water 
is full of uh, 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 sand. Sometimes the cattle, the flying people, they bring animals to come and spoil the water. If they came like this, we can stand and they will just drive their cattle inside the water. It was square because it's not deep. We are selling for those who are cooking food in the houses and sometimes those who are building. Uh -huh. But you know that alone can be risky for the health of people, the people you sell the water yes, to. That one there, we know it. So why don't you tell them so that even they would... You, even when you say that they won't mind you, who is going to stand and they fight for that? There's nobody. Now if a, a flanny man came here, you beat him up and he was wounded, they would say they would go and call police to come arrest you. For what? No, they are spoiling the, the water. The water that the whole town is using. The water at the moment has color. It looks green in color. It has odor. Water is supposed to be colorless and odorless. But the Agric Dam at Domongo, which is the major source of water for the residents here, has color and has stench. The people are left with no other option but to drink from this water source. If there's anything residents here at Damango are asking for is portable water provision. Perhaps that is likely to inform their choice of vote in this election year. For persons with disability, the arrival of the Joy Ballot Box train to Damango is a much anticipated platform to voice all their concerns. I met with a group of them and they were livid about some of the issues that will inform their votes this year. The schools, invariably, they are not disability friendly. As most of the children, especially those with clutches and whatnot, they suffer it. So we're looking at those things. We say that government, we are bringing government closer to the people. And now we are taking the departments very far away. For instance, someone from Bole Bamboy, uh, a nurse from Bole Bamboy, a nurse from Solatona Kalba, that wants to assess, uh, maybe for a promotion, that wants to assess the regional health directory, how to travel, come and bypass the regional capital, travel all the way to somewhere like Salga, or uh, Daboya, you see that, that it means we are not bringing the government closer. But we have said and mentioned and have spoken and cried out and no one is listening to us. And so I think that it is a very uh, good thing when you, you bring the ballot box, uh, the uh, Joy News ballot boxes out, I believe that you get to know a lot of uh, um, um, issues that are bothering us. And of course, the Joy ballot box is a Star Ghana sponsored initiative put together by Joy News to enable electorates to engage with their political actors on their voting decisions ahead of the December 7 general election. Watch out for the train in your community soon. Mfa Ewenam Atiamwa Eli for Joy News, Damango. You're still here on your election headquarters and now flag bearer hopeful of the People's National Convention, David Apacera, has unveiled his plans for the party should he be given the nod to lead the party in the 2020 polls. David Apacera said Ghanaians will see, among other things, increase in the number of parliament candidate, uh, parliamentary candidates and uh, national results reflecting the national character of the party competing among major parties. Although he has little hope of the party winning the 2020 polls, the party in the performance would not be, uh, the party's performance will not be abysmal. Joining us is Upper West Regional Correspondent Rafiq Salam has more. The People National Convention PNC flag bearer hopeful David Asibi Apacera in an exclusive interview with Joy News after meeting with some regional and constituency executives of the party stated that he has what it takes to change the fortunes of the party considering the enormous political experience beneath his lips. The flag bearer has to be the face of the party everywhere. And the flag bearer has to be on the ground everywhere. The flag bearer has to make sure that the party is properly organized at every community. That is how the party can go for. That is how people can vote for you. That is why I think I know how it is to organize a party from grassroots and then bring it up to victory. So I want to be the party flag bearer, to be able to carry the party forward. David Apasara debunked the notion that the PNC is poor and there's no way they can win political power. All political parties are poor. All political parties have the potential of becoming rich. If you win 
power, then there you are able to have leverage. You are able to have resources to use for party organization. We, if we had one, I can tell you, would have been also stronger. I, when we started politics in 1992, in my constituency, we were far stronger than MPP. Today, MPP is having greater numbers. Why? It's because we have not. And to be honest, nobody used personal resources to run party. We raise resources, we raise funds. And if you are holding power, you can raise funds. He is of the belief that the PNC will be better having him as its leader. You will see PNC in every community. You will see PNC in every community. You will see PNC parliamentarians or parliamentary candidates all over. And you will see the national results reflecting a party that stands tall amongst its peers. Reflecting that stands tall means that you win the 2020 polls? I am not saying I will win the 2020 polls, but it should not be ambismal performer. And all too soon, we've ended. That's how we wrap up election brief for today with me, Arabo Kumsen. Don't forget to log on to my join online for more news. Have a good afternoon.